Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be starting up a franchise mode that has quite the interesting twist on it. I mean, I'm not very good at franchise mode anyway. If you've watched any of my franchise modes, you know that already, so this is not news to you. However, if this is the first franchise mode that you're tuning into on this channel, I apologize in advance. So for this franchise mode, we are going to be doing an expansion draft, but every single season, I'm going to be spinning a random wheel that will give us three challenges we have to complete by the end of the year. And to ensure that I complete those challenges, the punishment will be putting our best player, highest overall, if there's the tie, then I guess I could pick, but there's probably gonna be one player that's the highest overall through waivers, okay? They gotta go, pretty much. And we get absolutely nothing in return. I will be trying to do about one episode, or one episode. Nope, this is gonna be more than one episode, believe it or not. It is a series, kind of. Well, not kind of, I guess it is a series. It's probably not gonna be a very long one, maybe, I don't know. Less than 10 episodes? Up to 10 episodes? We'll just see how it's going. But the whole goal is that I'm gonna finish one season per episode and get to the next one, essentially. And please, if you have more suggestions to add to the wheel, I'm more than willing to put them in. So go ahead, leave comments down below of what challenges you think should be added to the random wheel. All right, let's do this thing. Start career and get the expansion draft going. Truthfully, I'm not even a thousand percent sure that our logo is a Jaguar. I just went based off of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It looked kind of similar, so I'm assuming that it is. I feel like a lot of those wild cats, when you put them into sort of cartoony form like that, they could be pretty easily misinterpreted, but I think this one's okay. Anyway, enough about that. It's draft time. In terms of the draft, there's no restrictions. I can pretty much just take whoever I want, try to build a half-decent team here with some depth as well, hopefully. Brandon Carlo. 84 overall, 4 million. 25. Yes, sir. Andrew's available. Didn't see that coming. So is Noah Hannafin, but I feel like it's probably gonna be harder to get forward. So Andrew will be joining. I was, I was about to say a team name that's not even us. No, we are Montana. I was gonna say the Montana Moose though, which is, I don't know where I even pulled that from. I've taken basically all defensemen so far. We have one forward, six defensemen, and two goalies. So, might want to reconsider. There's just so many good defensemen. Like, how can I say no to this? I mean, worst case, Ontario, we could just trade them for players that aren't defensemen. So, I'm probably just going to try to take the player that I think has the most trade value. That was a speed draft if I've ever seen one. I didn't second guess pretty much any picks. It was instant. $8 million of cap space remaining. I think we should be all right. Let's go ahead and finish the draft. See what kind of challenges we get for this upcoming season. Oh my word. That is quite the generated prospect. He's gonna be going to Chicago. I don't really have much say in the matter, honestly. I'm just gonna do a regular draft, and I also don't have a whole lot of visibility because our scouts are pretty much useless. We do have another defenseman who is guaranteed to be medium elite, so I feel like our best bet is 100% this lad right here. 76 overall, medium elite potential, and he is loaded up. So yeah, I'm definitely down with that pick. Yeah, we have no visibility here. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Jamie Dubinsky, supposedly a grinder. Sure, why not? Low bottom six in round two. Oh no. Actually, to be fair though, this is not that bad compared to the pick previously. Look at that. Round three already AHL top six. Yeah, this is just a joke of a draft year clearly come on dylan andrews be medium elite no shot medium okay i'm just absolutely simming past this draft i cannot be bothered so obviously i added a contract year because i don't want to have to worry about signing everybody i will be signing our first round pick though i think he deserves it we could run into some goalie trouble somewhat soon in terms of contracts i mean we only have an 84 right now as our starter is he even listed as a starter he is. Okay, that's perfect. All right, here we are, season number one. And before I even look at our lines, let's find out what challenges we're going to have for the first season. Well, looking back at this during the editing process, I could see that there is a potential clash with the wheel in that you could get no trades. And on top of that, you could get trade for a first round pick and trade for a right-handed player. Although I guess you could argue it's no trades other than that one. Thankfully, in this, we did not encounter that clash. But anyways, enjoy. So as you can see here, there's several options like auto draft, which we will have to wait till the end of the year for that one. But turning injuries on, that's kind of going to suck. And then there's some trade-based ones. So let's go ahead and find out which one will be the very first challenge for this team. 
Okay, that's amazing. Thank you. I would just like to point out it's a good thing we have depth. If we do land on that again, however, I'm gonna spin again because that would just be pretty much cheating. Imagine we get injury on three times and it's pretty much just a regular season. No, that ruins the point. Well, on that note, let's spin again. This time we will have to have best lines used the entire season. I'm not allowed to edit the lines, which actually those two kind of work out well together because if a player gets injured, I'm probably just gonna best lines it anyway. No shot. I'm going in there and editing the lines every time. So now I'm forced to. Nice. And the third challenge will be for the year one Montana Jaguars, we have to trade for a right-handed player. No overall specifications or anything like that, but I'll try to make it somewhat meaningful. So there you have it, our three challenges for year number one here. I always forget because I feel like they change the button every single year as to what is best lines. I'll do it again just for good measure. Head coach preferred lines. We get Vrana, Sorelli, and Brown on our first line. Andrew with Alex and Jordan. Our team's pretty solid. I mean, we're not in any terms superstar filled, but we got depth, kind of. Defensively, it wants Gerard and Tony, and then it wants Justin Falk playing with Bean. Valimaki playing with Carlo. And of course, we got Ranta and Stellars in the net. Our AHL team should be pretty solid as well. I want to trade a goalie as part of our right-handed player deal strictly because I want Jacob, Jakob, whichever one it is, he should be the starter in the AHL because he's 22. He's got medium backup potential, already 77 overall. So if the team does well, I could see him jumping up. Never mind, our AHL team stinks. So I got to go sign some two-way contracts to fill out this roster because holy smokes, that's brutal. Sort by two-way contracts and then overall, let's get started. In order to get these contracts signed, I will have to advance a couple days. So let's see how we do. We win three nothing, a shutout in our first game against the Winnipeg Jets. That's a great way to start the season. I forgot about that. Logan Thompson was out for all of maybe 10 seconds. Head coach preferred lines, and then I will go to the AHL and do the exact same thing. Head coach preferred lines. There you have it. We have a pretty stacked AHL team now. I was just about to move this guy up, but I can't do that because it's best lines. So head coach preferred lines, just to show you again. I'm wondering if I should wait till the trade deadline to acquire a right-handed player, or if I should be looking now. I feel like at the trade deadline, there's more players available of higher caliber. So that's probably our best bet. I think I'm gonna do that. So far, it just seems to be Burnaby players that are getting injured. So I'm not too upset about that. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna best lines it, but also gonna go hire a lot of scouts because I just realized I have not done that yet. Probably should. Oh, they actually have hired a bunch of scouts for me already. That's very decent, and they're all pretty good in their region. All right, I'm just gonna leave this for now because between you and me, don't really care for this part of the game, honestly. <laughs> Melker Carlson is now injured, so we are receiving quite a few, but they don't seem to be lengthy injuries. They're very quick, and they're coming back right away. Marcus Foligno is out till November 13th, best line, so he'll be out. Actually, that's probably one of the longest injuries we've had yet. The only annoying thing about having injuries on is all of the pop-ups. I wish I could just say, hey, best lines, all you want, have at her. Actually, you definitely can do that, because in my career sims, I set everything to auto and it does it for me so maybe there is a way to do that but i feel like i'm just gonna tough it out for this one season oh my word okay you know what i withdraw my previous statement i'm not gonna let it slide i'm gonna figure out how to do that because this is getting out of control okay head coach edit lines yes yes is that all i had to do is just turn that on way to go random wheel we turned on the jabroni setting that was definitely it we are not getting barraged with injuries anymore it's gonna be interesting to see the amount of games that a lot of our players have played by the end of this year because there seem to be players dropping left right and center believe it or not we are having a bit of a stinker here but the good news is we did not land on the wheel slice that said we have to trade our first round pick so with that pick being in our possession we're in a pretty good spot other than the fact that we just went on a massive winning streak which i'll take as well if we want to do good fine Let's do good. I'm going to mark us as a buyer and I'm going to enter the trade deadline. So we got to get a right-handed player. Please have someone. He shoots left. Why did I think Patrick Kane shot right? David Perron shoots right, but he's also 34. 
Pavelski shoots right, but he's 38. Damon shoots right, but we just don't need more defensemen. Pavelski's just got the one year left at 5.5, so we could sign him and then pretty much just let him walk to free agency if he wants too much. But who will I give up in order to make this happen? That is the golden question. I feel like this won't even be close, but I'm going to try for Iafalo, Stellars, and a fourth. As I said, I wanted to try getting rid of a goalie anyway, and they are not interested whatsoever. So I will bump the pick up to a third and see if that makes any difference. No. Nope. What if I move the pick back to a fourth, but add in Carrier? Will that go through? It will. And we call up Logan Thompson. Are they going to say, oh, you can't fleece. You're such an idiot. Or is it going to be a fair trade? Okay, so it's just a fair trade. And with that, we can say that all of the challenges have been completed. How did Jake Evans get here? Anyway, I will do preferred lines just to see. Yep, it is all set up. And the AHL as well, just for good measure. Let's continue the simulation, see if we can somehow make it into the playoffs. We'll have to have an incredible post-trade deadline, which I do not foresee happening. Connor Brown is making 3.3, .3 and he wants 4.4. .4, so I'm not going to re-sign him right now. What about Philip? He is an RFA. He wants one year at 2.3, kind of a bridge deal. And he will still be an RFA after that. So you know what? I will go ahead and offer you that contract. Eric Howla making 2.3. Oh, absolutely not. Even Velomaki wants a big bump. He's making 1.5, and then he's going to want 4.2. Uh-uh. How much is Pavelski going to want? I'm probably just going to let him walk anyway, but he pretty much wants the same. Kind of tempting. We'll see. I have a feeling it's going to be a big free agency for us. No siree am I signing you to that. And then we have players like Ryan Paling coming up, but I think that... Nope, he's not going to want a two-way, so never mind. How does the 77 overall goalie want a two-way contract, and then this man's wants a one-way? Let's just simulate the rest of the season, see what happens. And the contracts that we did offer got signed. That is nice to know. Smashville fired their coach. Hate to see it. The lads failed to make the playoffs in year one, which is okay. I am not upset about it at all. Wait, hold on. The HLT? didn't even make it? How's that possible? San Jose had a miserable season. I have not had the chance to look at this year's draft class, but I wonder where we finished in the league. Okay, so we finished 25th. We have a very, very small chance at getting the first pick, but a decent chance maybe at moving up a little bit. Pavelski led the boys 59 points, and then Sorelli had 53. We struggled offensively, which I'm not really surprised about. Gerard actually put up 44, though, so that's very decent from him. We had to call up Jakob at some point. He played 15 games actually holy all right what happened there injuries must be yeah ranta's out washington wins the stanley cup wouldn't that be something where are we ah no way we moved back one spot from nine to ten that's super lame and then la at 12 moved up to two get real let's start the draft and see what players we can find here sim to pick number 10 so what do we have in the first round oh yeah how did Hello? We have a medium top six in front of us, medium top four. Will we be able to get a medium elite? Oh no. All right, Hunter is not supposed to go until about 82. Can I, I can pin him. All right, perfect. Cam Allen, is there anything else that you can show me? Not really. It's basically a blind pick. Oh no. I already know that all the hardcore franchise people are going to hate my guts, but there we go. Medium top four defenseman, I'll take it. We have a guaranteed low top four but no thank you. I've got three pinned players here, and I am not going to take them yet because we still have another shot in the dark we can take before these, but hold on, actually. We do have time, so I'm going to go ahead and take this completely unknown centerman who's probably going to be... Oh, wait, no, I'm not. His scout rank is nothing. Marcus has nothing to show, and I don't, I don't want another defenseman, though. I know that I probably should. He's probably the best bet, but I just don't want to take another defenseman. That makes it more tempting. All right, fine. We'll risk it for the biscuit. R2 is a medium top six defender. No abilities. We're actually gonna have to trade for a pick to get all the people that I pinned, so that sucks. <laughs> Probably should have thought about that beforehand, but we will go to the pin players now. Thorburn's supposed to go first. Another defenseman. Are you kidding me? But guaranteed medium elite, so I cannot say no to that. Yeah, 55 overall. It is what it is. The next player is supposed to go at 95. Okay. New York wants to get rid of Colorado's third round, which is a 92nd pick. It's cutting it close. I'll give you Jordan Eberle, free up some contract space for the hopefully large incoming free agency, proposed trade, and it's a done deal. There we have it. Hopefully, hopefully, the player is still there. Let me check the pinned players. Is there still going to be two? There is not. Maybe it was our guy. I think it was because it was a goalie. 
Are you kidding me? Well, our next pick is until like 130 something, I think. So I'll just take Breeze Galov now and hope that he is in fact low elite, which he is. Oh, it's actually 141. It's even worse than I thought. This guy's kind of well scouted. Know for sure that he's a sniper. Definitely not going to be a medium top six and definitely not going to have that ability. But I'm going to try it anyway, just because. Oh, amazing. Love that. Well, at least it wasn't an AHL player. Samuel, sure, why not? Let's take another risky pick here. Another medium. All right, you know, I'm just getting out of here. Joe Pavelski. Should we re-sign this guy? 6.1. I should have signed him when I had the chance. I'm going to let Connor Brown walk. Same with Eric Howla, I believe, because he wants, yeah, 3.2. At 82 overall, absolutely not. Valamaki actually doesn't want as much anymore. He wants 2.3 at two years. And is he interested in extension? He is. Okay. So that works out for us. I'll give you 2.2 for the two years. Hopefully you're happy with that. None of these lads need to be signed yet. So I will leave them unsigned for the time being. Rant is only looking for three. But I think I'm going to push my luck with free agency. And this man's is looking for a two-way contract now, which is very ideal. I will absolutely provide you with an offer. Let's see what we have available here in free agency. Please have... Oh my word. How much? 23 million. Passed as a UFA as well. 12.3 is lunacy. But how can I say no? I'm going to way overpay in hopes that we get him. 13 million dollars for David Pasternak. Goaltender wise, we got Jari. I will likely be sending him a contract. Ned would be nice as well, but Jari is 87 overall and he wants less. So how can you pick... Ned over Jari in this situation. Please, Pasta. You gotta sign with the boys. Come to Montana. Advance day. Advance day. It's gonna take him forever. Yes! We got him! Let's go! And we got Jari. All right, we're sick. It's official. We're actually insane. If you want to know a little madness, we still have $7 million of cap space, but I might want to kind of leave that. Barbashev's 83 overall and he wants $3 million. I'm gonna send him a contract and if he doesn't sign, then so be it. But if he does, phenomenal. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Thankfully, I can officially turn injuries off for now. Who knows what will happen in the next video. And I can also tell Jabroni to not edit my lines anymore. For now. And speaking of our lines, this is what they look like heading into year number two. I am quite happy with this. Defensively, we're still super solid. Offensively, we now have that X factor. Quite literally. Pasta should be able to score some goals for us. In net, we have Jari, which is another big improvement. Hopefully, Logan Thompson can grow a little bit this year. We still got these two guys in the AHL. And our AHL team looks like it could do bits. Defensively, we still got Lass. Lassie? I'm not really sure. But anyway, he's still only 77 overall. I can edit the lines now, however. So I will likely be giving him some more playing time. Something like that. Harley is 80 overall, to be fair, at 22. So he might get priority here. Or I could just do this. Yeah, who cares if they're both left-handed? But again, that could be deleted in seconds in the next video if we get the best lines again. Lilligren and Paling are both scratched. I'm gonna go ahead and send them down now. I might actually do this. Sorry, Harley. Well, let me know what you thought of that. If you even want me to continue this, then be sure to let me know. If you don't really like the idea that much, let me know as well and we can move on to other things. But if you are enjoying it, or if you did enjoy it, I should say, then let me know. On top of that, if you have other suggestions to add Add to the wheel for this upcoming season please let me know in the comments and i will get them on there i'm also open to any suggestions you know if you want me to do five challenges for example instead of three per season if that's what people want so be it but that will do it for episode one and potentially the last again depends if you guys even like the idea or not but we'll see i will see you soon